Getting shot in the stomach, not exactly conductive to keeping on living. A fact that makes the story of Alexis Saint-Martin all the more impressive. And by the way, this guy is French-Canadian. His name is like Saint-Martin or something, but I'm not going to try and slice his name in in French pronunciation all the time, so I'm just going to go with Saint-Martin. I know it's not exactly 100% accurate, but it is 100% more easy. So he got shot in this organ at the age of 20 on June the 6th, 1822, at a range of less than a meter. Despite this, he went on and lived for another half century, despite the wounds never completely healing. This gave scientists an almost literal window into how the body digests its food. So, how did this all come about? While Martin was an illiterate French-Canadian indentured servant working as a fur trapper for the American Fur Company, he was shot in the guts by a fellow trapper at the Mackinac Island trading post. What exactly happened here isn't clear, but it's largely agreed that the whole thing was pretty much just an unfortunate accident caused by the fellow trapper accidentally discharging his weapon. Within half an hour, the resident army physician stations at Mackinac Island, Dr. William Beaumont, was looking over St. Martin. And as you might imagine, what he saw wasn't exactly pretty. He stated, The duck shot entered posteriorly and in an oblique direction forward and inward, literally blowing off into garments and muscles of the size of a man's hand, fracturing and carrying away the anterior half of the sixth rib, fracturing the fifth, lacerating the lower portion of the left lobe of the lungs, the diaphragm, and perforating the stomach. The whole mass of materials forced from the musket, together with fragments of clothing and pieces of fractured ribs, were driven into the muscle and cavity of the chest. Found a portion of the lungs as large as a turkey's egg protruding through the external wound, lacerated and burnt, and immediately below this another protrusion which on further examination proved to be a portion of the stomach lacerated through all its coats and pouring out the food he had taken for his breakfast through an orifice large enough to admit the forefinger. All right, so as you might imagine from all of this and lacking modern surgery, Beaumont saw little hope that St. Martin would make it through the night. However, he operated as best he could anyway, and against all expectations, the man actually survived. A problem arose, however, when attempts were made for St. Martin to eat and drink. You see, thanks to the gaping hole in his stomach, anything swallowed ultimately just ended up gushing right out of the hole in his side. Undeterred, the enterprising Beaumont simply spent weeks feeding St. Martin via nutritious enemas. And this little bit of innovation, it actually totally worked. After a few weeks, Beaumont reported that rectal feedings became unnecessary, despite the hole in the stomach remaining. They got around the problem via applying compressors and adhesive straps to St. Martin so as to retain his food. Remarkably, Beaumont also notes no sickness nor unusual irritation of the stomach, not even the slightest nausea was manifest during the whole time, and after the fourth week, the appetite became good, digestion regular, the evacuations natural, and all the functions of the system perfect and natural. After five weeks, Martin was healing nicely in most everywhere except that troublesome hole in his stomach. Rather than healing naturally, it had become more or less attached to the hole in his skin, forming something of a sphincter with a slight prolapse of the stomach pushing through it. Because of this, continued application of compressors was needed for St. Martin to retain any food and drink. Eight months later, Beaumont was still attempting various, sometimes very painful means to get the wound to close itself with unfortunately no success. He then started cutting the stomach away from the skin and attempting to suture everything back up, but at this point, St. Martin had simply had enough. Otherwise mostly healthy and fully functional, other than, you know, the literal hole in his stomach and abdomen, he refused any surgery. In the interim of all this, St. Martin was released from his indentured servitude contract and booted out of the hospital as he had no money to pay. Beaumont, however, saw a golden opportunity in St. Martin to study the human digestive tract up close and personal, and we mean really personal. For example, at one point he literally stuck his tongue in the hole, noting, on applying the tongue to the mucous coat of the stomach, in its empty, unirritated state, no acid taste can be perceived. So up to this point in history, not really much was known about how the human digestive tract actually worked. Doctors in the past, they had experimented on animals, but this pretty much inevitably always led to the animal's death, so observing a working digestive tract was never really feasible. 
Also, dissecting human bodies absolutely was a thing, but again, it's not really helpful in observing the process of digestion happening in a living organism. To work out ways around this, some doctors had tried various things like tying strings to mesh bags filled with food items and then swallowing them, waiting for some period, and then pulling the item back up through the mouth. But nobody ever had a St. Martin to play with. As such, Beaumont offered to sign Martin on as an indentured servant to himself, primarily working as a laborer for Beaumont, but also with the agreement that Beaumont would be able to experiment on him in pretty much any way he wanted. Now, that original contract was lost to history, so we don't know the terms of that one, but one he later signed does remain. And in that new one, it basically says that in return for Beaumont being a guinea pig and his servant, Beaumont would cover St. Martin's room and board and would also pay him $150 a year, which is about $2,800 today. After a few years of this, St. Martin broke his contract and left without permission, heading up to Canada, where he started a family. Perturbed, but nonetheless still wanting to study St. Martin, Beaumont spent a considerable sum of money tracking St. Martin down and then convincing the fur company St. Martin was then working for to allow him to return. He then offered St. Martin things like a huge increase in pay, land granted by the government, and money to relocate his family, or better yet, even more money to abandon his wife and kids. However, privately, he darkly wrote, When I get him alone again, into my keeping, I will take good care to control him as I please. He also variously referred to St. Martin's children in a letter as livestock, and in a letter to the U.S. Surgeon General lamented St. Martin's villainous obstinacy and ugliness. Beyond all this, when writing about St. Martin, he generally referred to him as boy rather than calling him by his name. But before all of that, with lapses here and there due to the aforementioned instances of St. Martin fleeing the doctor's not-so-tender care, Beaumont basically spent his time dropping or shoving random things into St. Martin's stomach to see what happens. Oh, and we really do mean see here, because he would often force the hole open so he could get a good look at what would happen to food and drink once he put it in there. Oh, and beyond sticking his tongue in the wound, he also occasionally would extract things including stomach tissue and food items. On the latter, after extraction, he even sometimes tasted tested them, for instance at one point writing that partially digested chicken tasted bland and sweet. Beaumont also spent considerable time extracting stomach acid to then experiment with separately, including sending samples around to other doctors who were looking to do experiments. As to this uncomfortable procedure, he wrote, On introducing the tube, the fluid soon begins to flow, first by drops, then in an interrupted and sometimes in a short, continuous stream. Moving the tube about, up and down or backwards and forwards, increases the discharge. The quantity of fluid ordinarily obtained is from four drachms to one and a half or two ounces. Its extraction is generally attended by that peculiar sensation at the pit of the stomach, termed sinking, with some degree of faintness, which renders it necessary to stop the operation. The usual time of extracting the juice is early in the morning, before he is eaten, when the stomach is empty and clean. Fascinatingly, despite the wounds never healing, Beaumont did report a rather odd occurrence that happened about a year and a half after the initial injury. At this time, a small fold or doubling of the coats of the stomach appeared at the superior margin of the orifice, slightly protruding and increasing till it filled the aperture, so as to supersede the necessity for the compress and bandage for retaining the contents of the stomach. This valvular formation adapted itself to the accidental orifice as to completely prevent the flux of the gastric contents when the stomach was full. Thus, while the hole in St. Martin's stomach and abdomen still persisted, an effective sphincter of sorts made up of stomach tissue formed to allow St. Martin to no longer necessarily need a wrap to keep the contents of his stomach from simply falling out. In any event, the various discoveries Beaumont made over the course of years experimenting on St. Martin ultimately saw him named the father of gastric physiology and helped him lay the groundwork of our modern understanding of the human digestive process. Amazingly, St. Martin actually lived to the ripe old age of 78, siring six children and otherwise living a pretty normal, if mostly impoverished, life. As for after, while inquiries were made by doctors to acquire St. Martin's body when he died, his family had anticipated this, reportedly leaving his body out in the sun for a time until it was quite decomposed and then burying him in a secret location to avoid any chance anyone would dig him up and perform an autopsy. As to specific inquiries, one doctor boldly sent a medical bag for St. Martin's family to mail the stomach back in. Instead, they simply replied with a telegram stating, don't come for autopsy, we'll be killed. So that was another one in our new series today in history. As always, we'd love to know what you think of this new series. We're trying it out. 
In the comments below, just let us know what you think. If you did like it, give us a like. If you didn't like it, well, you can give us a dislike, but yeah, I suppose dislikes work too. Also, subscribe to this channel for videos like this, as well as, of course, our regular content. And as always, thank you for watching.